Hey guys, Mr. P. In this video, we're going to talk about modeling global systems. How are these global systems modeled? What are the global systems? How do the global systems interact with each other? And what influence do these global systems have on ultimately each of the other global systems? So this is going to be a really short video. We're going to dive in, kind of talk about what these global systems are, and then move on. So when we talk about these global systems, we need to talk about the fact that these global systems are not stagnant, meaning they do change and they change quite a bit. One way to understand global systems is to develop a model that shows those systems, the processes that operate within each of those systems, and then ways that those systems and processes interact. And so this image is going to hopefully depict not only the four global systems we're going to talk about, but also we're gonna start kind of painting a picture as to what influence these global systems have on each other. So the first of the four global systems that we're gonna talk about includes the biosphere. And we've spoken about the biosphere in previous videos. We know that the biosphere includes all living organisms and all of the environments that those organisms live in on the planet. It includes all aspects of the earth, okay? Plant life, animal life, insect life, bacteria life, all of those uh, help to shape the biosphere. This is the physical living environments that all of those living organisms uh, reside in. We have the hydrosphere, which consists of all of Earth's fresh and salt water, including liquid water and water vapor. It includes rain, it includes runoff, it includes groundwater, it, can, it includes aquifers, it includes all of the fresh and salt water on the planet, both above ground and underground. The atmosphere is basically everything above the ground. It includes all of the gases that surround Earth. One of the biggest uh, benefits to us from the atmosphere, or, be, or be one of the biggest benefits that the Earth has in regards to the atmosphere is that it maintains a constant temperature, or a relative constant uh, temperature, and so it gives access to uh, life uh, as we know it. And then the last one is the geosphere. So the geosphere includes all the usually solid stuff, in quotes. This includes rocks, continents, ocean floor, and it's important to note that deep inside the Earth, portions of the geosphere are liquid. Uh, which is why we have volcanoes, and those volcanoes erupt magma and lava, and those are liquid components. So, how do these four interact? Do the four interact? And, in fact, they do. If we start with the biosphere, which in my opinion is probably one of the most easily understood global systems, uh, because it includes us, we obviously are impacted by the hydro uh, hydrosphere, because water is one of those essential uh, one of those essential variables that life depends on. We also depend directly on the atmosphere and the at atmosphere not only blocking out a lot of the, or at least filtering out a lot of the harmful UV radiation that emits from the sun, the atmosphere is also going to hold in um, a, a stable amount of heat, okay, or a good amount of heat that gives rise to uh, conducive temperatures or temperatures that are conducive to uh, sustaining life. The atmosphere is also going to have CO2 and O2. Obviously, we are aerobic organisms, and so we go through aerobic respiration, which we'll cover in a lot more detail later, but that includes oxygen as a, as a reactant for this cell respiration pathway. That is obviously part of the atmosphere. Now, plants, which are another part of this biosphere, are dependent not only on O2, but CO2, carbon dioxide. And so carbon dioxide is one of those main components of the atmosphere as well. Plants, just like us, depend on water as well. The geosphere is going to be that, that rocky, solid ground that not only gives rise to a physical space for the biosphere and life to live on, uh, there are a lot of other processes that the rocks are going to play in on, specifically those uh, geochemical cycling. Um, hydrosphere uh, and the water leads to erosion when water runs across rocks for a long period of time. Uh, so if we just kind of go through some of these examples, let's kind of start here with the geosphere. If the geosphere consists of this rock, which a lot of times consists of nutrients like or minerals like phosphorus, if we talk specifically the phosphorus cycle, as the water 
uh, runs over the rock in, in this geosphere, it's going to cause the phosphorus that's locked in rock to seep into the water supply, which is going to enter water supplies and then help uh, uh, replenish the phosphorus levels within the plant life that obviously take in that water through their roots. So that's an example of this geosphere leaching phosphorus into the water and the water taking that phosphorus to the plants in order to uh, make life possible for those plants. Also, uh, water is going to be lost through the stem and the vascular tissue of plants through a process called transpiration. That water vapor uh, obviously is part of the hydrosphere, but that water vapor is going to enter the atmosphere it's going to mix with some of the other atmospheric components and will eventually rain back down in the form of precipitation. And so that is a, an interaction in which life on Earth, the biosphere, is going to produce water, part of the hydrosphere. It's going to reside in the atmosphere temporarily before it res uh, rains or precipitates back onto the planet. Uh, in order to either replenish the hydration levels within the plants or enter uh, the liquid water components of the hydrosphere as well. Another big one, which we'll talk about in a lot more detail later, but the plant life and the animal life, I've kind of, I'm, I've kind of already uh, alluded to that, but there are processes called cellular energetics in which photosynthesis and cell respiration are big energy producers of the life, both plants and animals that reside within this biosphere. Those life forms, plants and animals, are going to take in oxygen and CO2, and they're also going to produce oxygen and CO2, respectively. Um, it's not a big deal that you understand the uh, actual components of those processes yet, that will come later in the course, but these life forms, plants and animals, are going to take in oxygen and CO2, they're going to release oxygen and CO2, and so those molecules of O2 and CO2 are going to enter the biosphere, they're going to then re-enter the atmosphere, these life forms are going to take in water, a lot of times these hydrolysis reactions, uh, when living organisms break down food items, they're going to split water in order to break down polymers into monomers, and, and again we'll talk more about that in the future. But as you can see, there are a ton of interactions, and those are just a few uh, that come to mind right now. Uh, when we talk about how to link these global systems and how changes in these global systems can impact other global systems. Um, homeostasis is a big component of biology, and homeostasis is the constant internal or maintenance of a constant internal temperature. Well, the globe or the, the earth needs to maintain kind of this constant balance among all of these global systems as well. Uh, and so all of these kind of play into each other and help to shape each other. That'll be it for this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you have a question, leave it in the comments. See you next time.